Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For this video, I'm going to be reacting to, well, it's a long title, Megan Thee Stallion Caught Lying, Witness Says Kelsey Shot, Megan and Tori Try to Stop Her, Day 6 and 7. Okay, so we all know who this man is. He's been, like, everywhere reporting about the cases, or the cases, the case, because he has, I guess he's in the courtroom every time. And, um, yeah, no one... It's not televised or anything, so none of us really know what's going on in the courtroom. So, like, we rely on information, especially from this guy, because he's really good at telling what's happening inside the courtroom. And it seems like everyone's lying. <laughs> like, no one can have, like, a definite answer of what really happened, because everyone has, like, different stories and nothing, like, matches up. Maybe, like, a few things match up, but not everything matches up. So, like, it's really hard to tell who's telling the truth or who's lying. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I thought uh, Kelsey was going to, like, give the truth and, like, we would know, like, definitely what really happened. But she was pleading the fifth, so she didn't really say everything that she should have said. So I guess she's protecting herself. So maybe she did shoot. I don't know. Maybe Tori did shoot. Maybe one of them was trying to stop each other because they both had gun residue on themselves. Or maybe they just both shot. They were both holding the gun. They both pulled the trigger. They both pulled the trigger. <laughs> that is not a tongue twister. I don't know why. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so I don't know what's going on. And yeah, it's crazy. I thought that this case would be like really fast. Like everything would come out in the open and then it would be like a straight straight path just to the the results but it doesn't seem like that's happening because it seems like everyone's lying and none of the stories like go with each other so I don't know what's happening but anyway I'm gonna stop talking and um let's see what he has to say for these updates and also please subscribe let me know what else I should react to in the comments below wow that was an introduction <laughs> Huge updates in the morning session of week two of the Tory Lanez trial. The one independent witness, the homeowner who was at the house right in front of this shooting, will testify this afternoon. The defense is calling him as a witness. The prosecution didn't call him. That's a shame. Oh, also, um, I saw like headlines or something that Tory was caught with, um, not the witness, um, the jury, someone from the jury. What was that about? Like, I don't understand. And also, um, wasn't a jury member kicked out Kicked out because he was drunk? I don't understand. And also, um, there's so many things I don't understand about this case. <laughs> Number two, the judge allowed rap lyrics into evidence. That's a huge shame. Let me t that doesn't make sense. Like, why would you allow rap lyrics? People can rap about things that didn't really happen. I don't understand. Like, so if, if Aqua went to court, would they use Barbie girl as lyrics? Like, so you said you're a Barbie girl. Like, lyrics don't have to be real. Like, they could be made up. I don't understand how they use lyrics in the court courtroom. That doesn't make sense. I tell you, not just did they let the rap lyrics come in, the rapper is not even here. They're using a rap song allegedly done by Kelsey. Kelsey is not here to testify about the lyrics. Instead, the judge allowed an investigator to say, I heard the song. This is what it says. Here's evidence for this case. And did she even write the song? Just because you sing a song doesn't mean you wrote the song. I don't understand. Wait, didn't they make a law in California that you can't use rap lyrics to um, convict someone? Aren't they in California? I don't understand. <laughs> What's going on? unbelievable the only thing more shameful was the prosecution's presentation of the rap lyrics using one of their investigators let me show you how that went down let me tell you what this investigator did on the stand today and somebody call the governor because first off the rap lyrics should never have been used and this investigator should not, i mean let me tell you listen to this it's absurd so then the prosecutor says hey doesn't in this song doesn't it say isn't this kelsey rapping that oh i didn't shoot you, you should clear my name. And the investigator's like, yes. Okay, defense goes up. Hey, in this song, doesn't Kelsey also rap about Meg is lying to the DA? And since was Kelsey, since when, since when was Kelsey a rapper? I don't understand. Like, she wouldn't be known 
if it wasn't for Megan, isn't she Megan's best friend from her hometown, Houston, Texas? Like, we would not know Kelsey if it wasn't for Megan. So how is Kelsey, like, all up in the music industry now? How is she meeting all these famous people now? Is because of Megan, right? So how are you going to turn on your best friend? Like, I don't understand. Anyway. <clears throat> Meg is lying to her man her manager and that her manager somebody named Dez is making threats on Kelsey and the investor is like no I don't know can you show me playing dumb and the guy's like wait didn't you come here to testify about what this song says but you can't answer any of my questions on the stuff that doesn't fit your narrative basically so the prosecutor comes back on and says hey wait but all that stuff about lying there's only one mention of lying with the DA isn't there and so this investigator is like yeah there's only one okay now the defense goes on Hey, wait, I just asked you, can you tell me about all the other mentions of lying? You said you don't know, you have to review the whole song. But when the prosecutor came up and asked you to confirm there's just one, you just jumped out of your seat and were like, yes. How does all your memory come back about the song when the prosecutor asks you questions, but you know nothing when I ask you? A very, very fair point from the defense. Look, we'll see what the eyewitness has to say. But like I said, somebody call the governor. Using rap lyrics of the defendant, where the defendant can actually defend himself against the lyrics is one thing. Using the rap lyrics of another rapper, where that rapper is actually... And lyrics aren't even true. Some people <clears throat> write stuff or rap about stuff just for clout and all that. But that's why... I don't, that doesn't make sense. How are you going to use rap lyrics? What if it's not true? And you won't know it's true because you're not the person that wrote the song. Like, only the person that raps about it knows if it's true or not. So how are you going to tell them, oh, it's true because it's in the song? I don't understand. Actually in court and you can ask him questions about what the song is after the prosecution uses it is another thing. Using rap lyrics about a song that we don't even know who wrote it, who's singing it. Some investigator says they found it on the Internet <laughs> is a whole other thing. And then when that investigator decides to have selective memory, just like Meg and Kelsey, whenever the defense asks them a question about a song that they were their sole job, the only reason they're here is to listen to that song, come to court and testify it. But you don't remember a single line about, oh, I'm lying, about, oh, managers are threatening me, about, oh, the, you don't remember any of the stuff. That's a neutral investigation. That's what's going on, California. Get out. Here's your Monday update. Prosecutors just tried to charge Tory with two new felony counts of intimidating a witness. One for intimidating Meg, two for intimidating Kelsey. They want these charges added to the criminal complaint and they want these charges to go to the jury at this trial. But um, I don't even know who's protecting who. Like, I know Kelsey is like in the middle. Like, she's not, it seems like she's not protecting Tori or Megan. So I don't know whose side she's on. But um, I don't know why, whoever knows the truth, I don't know why they're not telling the truth because, um, I don't know, it's weird. Like, they came to trial to, like, convict Tori for shooting Meg, but now we don't even know if he actually shot her because Kelsey didn't answer her questions because Kelsey could have just said off the bat, like, yeah, I saw it, like, I was trying to stop him. That's why I have gun residue on myself. But now um, she's looking suspicious because she kept pleading the fifth and she didn't tell everything that she should have told. So... I don't know, maybe she got paid off or she was threatened and yeah, one of those because if she knows something and then now she doesn't want to tell anything, she was either paid off or she threatened like if you tell the truth, like we're going to kill you or something like that. So um, I don't know, I feel like that's what's going down. And also the driver that night, like he's nowhere to be found or maybe they're looking for him like maybe he was threatened to like if you testify we'll kill you I don't know but um yeah they should um oh if that comes out that Tori like threatened them like for testifying and telling the truth uh that's really gonna shock the world the judge said what <laughs> hold up now you, you, we just finished pretty much all the testimony. By the way, there's about one day of testimony left, maybe two. And you guys want to add two new counts for what? Based on what? How long have you had this information? They said, well, 
We know that he's been threatening to pay them a million dollars, and we had that information a while ago, but we didn't know how they were going to testify. The judge said, no, that's not how this works. You cannot add these charges to this trial right now. It would be so unfair to the jury to hear, to the defendant to hear that this is what you're trying to do. So the judge denied it. If they want to charge him. Wait, is uh, Tory going to testify? Is he ever going to go take take the stand? And answer all these questions or is he gonna plead the fifth also I don't know he probably won't tell the truth either no one's telling the truth like if they were all telling the truth like so many more things would have lined up in the stories but it seems like everyone has a different version of what happened that night and with intimidating a witness they can do that with a separate case it's not gonna happen on this case as to the rest of the trial testimony will conclude probably tomorrow maybe the day after closing statements coming on Wednesday or Thursday we should get a verdict I don't know how long it's gonna take the jury but this is gonna be given to the jury by Thursday or Friday more updates to come Wow I think this is good tea I don't think the internet has seen this at all this is the best tea Tori and Meg did not have like a one-time thing or wasn't like slight no they they were all right so this is what ej testified that during quarantine i don't know who ej is these two basically boot up and during quarantine um they stayed together a lot they hung out together a lot they traveled together um ej said that he saw or dropped off meg with tori on at least 10 occasions and that in general that in quarantine, when people were picking up little groups and who they're gonna hang out with and who their circle was gonna be, Meg and Tori and their little circles were basically quarantine buddies, taking trips together, hanging out together. Listen, don't let anybody ever tell you that there was no relationship there or that it was a minor thing. Better than TV. How yeah, and that's weird, because Megan said that <clears throat> there was nothing going on between them. So, um, yeah, if she told the truth from the beginning, then like people would be more i don't know people would believe her more than they do now because um now that it came out that she had a relationship kind of with him like people don't know what to believe anymore hollywood writers can't make this stuff up wait until you hear what the eyewitness testimony was this morning at the tory lane street oh they is asked the Mr. homeowner Kelly, do you know why you're here he said absolutely the defense attorney put up a picture of the back of his home you could see a driveway they had him draw a square where the suv was parked it was right on the curb of the back of his house 10 15 feet his window is overlooking it. He stepped out onto his Juliet balcony and he watched for several minutes. Did he take video? Like everyone has a phone these days. So did he not take a video of what happened or take pictures? He just watched it or he just looked with his own eyes. He didn't, he didn't think to take a video. As Meg the Stallion and Kelsey, the two females, he didn't identify them by name, got out of the car and they were engaged in a fight. It was violent. It was quite aggressive. It started with arguing. Wait, but <clears throat> oh no, he's a witness. That's fine, but he doesn't have video of this. That's kind of suspicious, because <laughs> these days everyone has a phone. So I don't know. Maybe he's one of the people that doesn't like run to his phone right away when something happens. But yeah, it would be good. It would be a lot better if he had video footage of this, like. Maybe Tori paid him off too. You never know. Arguing that woke him up in the middle of the night. Where his house is, often him and his son are woken up in the middle of the night by people who stop in and around the back of his home. This was another night arguing, escalation, two women fighting. He watched the whole thing while standing on his balcony. Oh my God, it gets crazier. But did I wonder if anyone asked him, like, you didn't think to record this? Or is it so common that people make noise on the back street that you just got tired of filming stuff i don't know as he looked down on a fight that he described as quite violent he then saw the larger gentleman this is presumably the security guard kwan come and violently try to separate them eventually all four were involved in what he called an aggressive everyone fighting essentially just a melee a free-for-all between four people in the middle of the night right outside of his back window he said at one point he saw one woman go back towards into the car at that point he saw a muzzle flash 
Then he said there was a man, and after the first few shots from the woman came off, he saw the man getting involved with the woman, and more shots went off. Okay, so um, if I was there, if I was that man, and I'm watching this, and then I see a gun, like I would have run away. <laughs> like I ain't trying to get shot by a stray bullet or something, but he's there watching the whole thing, and he didn't take any pictures. That's strange. He stood there the whole time while they're shooting, but he didn't think to like take pictures of this or record. And he stood there the whole time when there was a gun. No, that's crazy. <laughs> On cross-examination, the prosecutor asked him, did you see the man shoot? He said, yes, I saw the, the shorter man with a gun shooting violently in the air at least five times. <laughs> okay. And you're just there watching this whole thing, watching him shoot in the air. Like you're not scared to get shot. Like accidentally? Hey, wait, what? <laughs> That's not what you just testified. Then the defense attorney went back and asked him, I thought you said you saw the woman and then you saw the man shoot. And he's like, yeah, you have to understand. It was just a crazy free for all and it all happened very quickly. And then he said the most shocking thing that has come out in this case, which is that after the shots went off, one woman crawled further away, that the three people then went over there and beat her violently while she was on the ground they picked her up they looked like they were going to drag her and throw her into the river instead they dragged her across the street put her in the car and drove off the prosecution were on lunch the prosecution is going to come back and basically wait what drag her they took her back in the car but like the videos we've seen megan was like walking on the street so i don't know did they drop her off at a different location? I don't know. Basically, they're trying to build the case that this witness is lying because he's intimidated by the defense, that he never said anything about the muzzle flash going off near Kelsey, and now he's saying all this because he's scared of telling the truth. We'll see how that comes out on direct. Here's a fact, though. He has been consistent about a couple things. One, the two women were outside that car fighting for several minutes, escalated, started with an argument. Wait, who called the cops then? Not him? Maybe not, because he was just standing there watching the whole thing. He didn't think to even grab his phone to take pictures or video. So he probably didn't, he probably didn't even have his phone to call the cops. So someone else called the cops. Then it got quite violent, and the security guard came out to try to separate them. The idea that the jury would credit Meg's testimony, which is just completely contradicted by this eyewitness, is highly unlikely. The prosecution has major work to do to save their case, which is absolutely on life support right now. I feel like everyone's lying, so they're just going to throw everyone out. Like, case dismissed, like, no one's telling the truth, so we can't come with a verdict, so um, y'all got to leave. But, uh, yeah, that's crazy, like, especially the witness. Like, if you saw something going down, wouldn't you think to take a picture or a video? At least a picture. Or, like, call the cops, but you're just standing there watching people shoot and fight and being dragged. Like, okay, like, if I saw that, I was like, no, I don't want to get shot, so I'm just going to go back in the house, maybe sneak a sneaky picture, but I don't know. Was he even there? Did he even see anything? You never know. But um, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Let me know what else I should react to in the comments below. And if you want to see my experiences in Korea, you can check out my first channel, SexyV. And if you want to see my other socials right here under my face, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.